Yeah. So actually there's something right up here I can point out. And that is spice bush. So here is a spice bush. Spice bush is a fabulous plant. It's also pretty common here in, in the park because it's deer tolerant. So if you're looking for something shade tolerant and deer tolerant, this shrub is for you. So on these twigs, they're kind of light, light greenish gray. They've got these little white dots on them. Those are called lenticels. But the big thing that's helpful for identifying spice bush are these really bulbous flower buds. So you can see they're all up and down these stems. They're in clusters of three or four or sometimes five. They're very cute and they will turn into bright yellow flowers in the spring. So these flowers, they're really round. They kind of look like pom-poms. Um, they bloom really, really early in the spring before this has any leaves on it. Those flowers are pollinated by bees. And then this gets bright green leaves. Um, nothing super spectacular in the summer. It's a nice filler, but then come fall, oh, they turn bright, clear yellow. The, the fall color is really nice on a spice bush too. And if you crush the leaf uh, in the summertime, it smells so good. And that's where it gets its name. Um, it would also happen if you scratched this twig. Spice bush is also the host plant for the spice bush swallowtail. Spice bush swallowtail, beautiful butterfly. It can only eat two plants, the caterpillar. And it's spice bush and sassafras, both of which are awesome plants. So if you want spice bush swallowtails in your backyard, and you should because their caterpillars are adorable snake mimics. So they try and look like a little snake so that predators are scared of them. And if you give them a little gentle poke, they actually have something that comes out of their head that looks like a snake tongue. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So highly recommend you plant spice bush and then you can keep an eye out for the adorable caterpillars. Yes. This yes. is a good alternative to forsythia. Absolutely. Forsythia is a non-native plant. Um, it's on the invasive watch list for yes. Pennsylvania. Um, so this is a good alternative. The flowers are not quite as showy, but it blooms around the same time. It's got a similar kind of form. And the, the kind of open habit that they have, really great for bird nests as well, specifically wood thrush, which have the most beautiful song in, I mean, maybe not in the entire world because it's a really big world and there's a lot of birds, but in our region, I believe, in my opinion. Plus, it's a beautiful shrub. And you can eat the red berries. And you can eat the berries. Eat the berries. I know. They kind of, you can you can They're use them intense. as a spice too. People, there's some chefs that say they like they gotta have them. Yep. Yeah, kind of bitter. yeah, like yeah there's like them. it's like it's like um, I don't know. It's really intense oil, like uh, toluene or whatever. I'm trying to think of the stuff they use yeah. for cleaning off. Uh, you know, kerosene. It kind of tastes like kerosene. <laughs> Which doesn't throat. sound attractive, but, <laughs> but that's when you just... take the berry and eat it immediately. You can just take the in uh, the outer fruit. Um, you can do something just with the outer fruit, and you can also take the inner seed and treat it like you can crush it and treat it like a like a spice that you use very sparingly. Yeah. <laughs> You can also make tea and out of the berries. Yes, that's right. So much to love about spice bush.